back with more fridge fun. Um, today I want to tell you a little bit about the number bond. This is a tool that we use a lot in addition and subtraction. And so this is what the number bond looks like. There are two parts or there can be more and there's one hole. So this part on top is the hole. So when we're adding, we're putting the two parts together and the hole's getting bigger. And when we're subtracting, we start with a hole, we take a part, and then we see what part is left. So in my class, we always practice this with our number bonds. So we take our two hands like this and we say part, part, hole, and we put them together. Ready? Let's practice. Part, part, hole, part, part, hole, put them together, and the number gets bigger. And then we also practice uh, getting our minds ready to subtract and we say whole start with whole take a part see what's left whole part 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 whole whole part part and so this is sort of developing the relationship between addition and subtraction for first and second graders if you are doing this at home you can easily draw this number bond it's really simple and so what it looks like is if you want to play like a game. I just got a little deck of cards that Miss B and I have been playing with and I took out all the face cards or you can just make those worth 10 if you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull cards and I'm going to make those the two parts just to challenge myself to practice finding the hole and adding a little bit today. Okay, so here's one part. The first part is six. And then the second part, and I'll put it here, is four. Good job. All right. All right, so now what I do, I can use all these different strategies that I have to add. I can count on in my head. I can use a picture. So typically by this time in the year, we want to move away from using fingers or drawing pictures for everything so that students are ready to add larger numbers. So the best strategy would be if they don't have it memorized already to find the whole, you take the bigger part. So what's bigger, four or six? Okay, six is the greater number and you put it into your head. So you visualize the six. So in my head, I'm seeing six. Now you use your fingers to count on the next number. So I'm not counting one, two, three, four, five, six, and then adding four more. What I'm doing is I'm putting the six inside of my brain and I'm starting counting up from there. So I have six in my head and now I'm gonna count on four. So I say seven, eight, nine, ten, And I landed on 10. Good job. So the whole is 10. And you can have your students practice writing Six plus four is the same as 10. So I could do it here. I don't want to write on Miss B's fridge. Six plus four is the same as 10. Or you could even switch the add-ins, use a commutative property, and you could do four plus six is the same as 10. All right, let's do one more together and then you can practice at home all by yourselves. All right, so, and you obviously don't have to pin them up with magnets, but you can if you want. Okay, let's review. We're working with our number bond. So we're doing part, part, whole. In addition, these are the academic word for them. It's called the add-in. So I'm gonna put part, part, whole. But if you were to use the academic word, in addition, this is called add-in. Add and say add and add and add and and the whole in addition is called the sum. Sum. All right. My next two challenges are going to be. Oh, this is a nice one. Ten plus eight. All right. So I have to think in my head. I'm going to use my strategy to count on. So I think in my head. What is the bigger number, 10 or eight. Say the bigger number. Good, it's 10. So put 10 in your head and then I'm gonna count on eight. So this is when you really see that counting on is a great strategy because I don't have 18 fingers to use. Okay, so put 10 in my head. And I don't say 10 when I'm counting. Now I say the next number. So after 10 comes 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And I counted on eight, and now we landed on 18. So the sum is 18. And then here were my two add-ins that I put together, 10 and eight. So it works like this, 10 plus eight is the same as 18. If I'm putting those two parts together, I make an 18. 18 minus 10 is the same as eight. 18 minus eight is the same as 10. Eight plus 10 is the same as 18. So it, this builds a fact family for students to be able to access all those facts really easily and it's a very clear way for them to help see the relationship between numbers. All right, so to practice this at home, all you need is a piece of paper and a pencil and a deck of cards, or you can use dominoes or any other thing that has numbers. Have fun.